Hey there, it's Dr. Jim. Thank you for taking some time to listen to another topic that I'm very interested in. I've been interested in it for years and years and years. It's very near and dear to my heart, and it's leadership. What I want to talk about specifically are leadership skills for the future. Okay, why do I care about the future? Because everything's changing. The workplace is changing. The environment's changing. Generations. We, we're working with five generations. Sadly, we'll only be working with four. But there are a lot of differences out there. Here's a quote by Gandhi that I really love. The future depends on what we do in the present. How insightful, how wise is that? Leaders who embrace new ways and better ways to lead today are developing a stronger set of tools to lead tomorrow. And all good leaders require a number of skills, not just one, not just two, but a whole toolkit, okay, to help them successfully interact with their team, especially as the workplace continues to evolve culturally and technologically, okay? So leaders come in all shapes and sizes, different ages, different points in their career. Some are starting, some are mid-career, some are going to be exiting soon, different genders, ethnicities, educational backgrounds, different areas of the country, okay? But regardless of those characteristics, all leaders should, should have the following skills, now, or at least start building on them, continually learn about them, to be better leaders in the future. Okay, I'm going to count these down. Number one is communication. By far, the most important skill is communication. It's the foundation. It's the bedrock for anyone who's going to lead a group of people, whoever they might be. Leaders must have the skill to clearly and succinctly explain everyday operations and the big picture, why we're doing this, what we're doing, where we're going. And it's important for leaders to be flexible. Communicate one-on-one. -on -one. Communicate to small groups, a large room full of people, on the phone, email, video, all of that's important. And I know... The number one phobia in the United States is public speaking. Leaders, you need to learn to master public speaking, okay? I have a one-two punch. I've used it my entire 30-plus year career, and it's worked fabulously. I'm addicted to public speaking, okay? Number one, know what you're talking about. Read, 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 research until you know what you're talking about. Number two, have the drive and the passion to share it, to teach it, to help others understand more about it. Know it, have passionate about it. Okay, there you go. Number two, creativity. Leaders cannot be a one-trick pony. They've got to be creative. They have to think on their feet, and they even have to think faster cognitively. They need to be really sharp, really fast. The workplace is changing. We know that. Different generations are coming and going. Creativity means this. Be a little experimental. Don't be afraid. Allow for some innovation in how things get done and encourage others around you if they're not so effective, not so efficient, teach them how to drop the old ways of doing those things and maybe change it up a little, okay? Be innovative, be experimental, and don't be afraid. Three, this is big, and I've, I've learned about this one for 20 years now, emotional intelligence, E-I. What is emotional intelligence? It is, first of all, the leader is understanding fully his or her own emotions. I know where they're coming from. I know how to manage them. I know how to think about my emotions before I react. It truly is emotional 
management on the part of the leader. There's another part to it. The leader also understands the employee's emotions and where they're coming from and how they're responding. And the leader is attempting to manage all of these emotions. And by doing so, it increases the level of emotional intelligence within that group. That's a skill. And that is something really important to possess as a leader. Number four, cultural intelligence. The world is changing. We've been globalizing for decades. The workplace is very diverse. Uh, cultural intelligence simply means to understand more about the culture and the backgrounds of the individuals you're working with. Learn more, come to appreciate more. We're all different. There's beauty in differences. To be sensitive to other people's cultures, their beliefs, their norms, their values, all of those things. It's just being a part of a human family is appreciating others. And that is cultural intelligence. Five, cult uh, cognitive flexibility. You have to be able, as a leader, to quickly and effectively shift mental focus from one task over here to another task over there, getting interrupted by the phone, someone walking through your office, you have to shift from here to there to there and back again. You have to. This is a skill that requires focus and train of thought in one area that can be mentally shelved for a little bit. All right, let's, let's shelve it, let's put it in this little drawer what we were doing, in order to tackle the next round of actions that are required. Uh, things happen, the day changes, there are priorities and emergencies. You know how it goes, right? All of that means you are practicing cognitive flexibility. Number six, and let me see how many I have. We're almost done. Persistence. This is one of my favorite ones. And it's good for you to know this. Persistence is wired into our human DNA. There's no way the human race would have made it this far from running away from dinosaurs to building pyramids to leading revolutions to exploring space. Persistence is already sitting here inside of us, waiting for you, the leader, to fully tap in to its potential. Persistence. Number seven, motivation. Leading is motivating. It is inspiring others to see the overall vision and the mission as a whole and to understand their distinct part in them. Motivation involves building employee self-esteem and confidence, rewarding good people for the things that they do well, giving employees more roles, more responsibilities, and increasing their investment in the workplace. Those are all great examples of motivation. Here's some other important leadership skills to work on now and in the future. Delegation, positivity, empathy, collaboration, trustworthiness. No one's going to follow you unless they trust you. Feedback and commitment. Here are my final thoughts and I'm going to wrap it up. Some leaders have natural talents that can be improved through focused practice. Others need to take an inventory of their strengths and their weaknesses and decide what they're going to work on and what will benefit them the most. It's an intelligent way to handle this. Regardless, the workplace will continue to change and evolve, so leaders need to learn new skills today for their success tomorrow. Thank you very much for spending some time with me. I'm Dr. Jim. I'll see you next time.
Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for your time. If you'd like more information about a great online learning management system with the most wonderful support, best in class support and partnering, please look for the link to the website in the description. You'll love what you see.